Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Turtle Wins the Race home-based business podcast. My name is Kara Bunton, and I have run a home-based business since 1999. So I have plenty of years under my belt with that. And, you know, I've, I've worked in different businesses and different, like one was wedding cakes. It was local, all selling to local people. Now I sell online. So what I wanted to do today was talk about slow periods of business, because no matter what you do, you're going to have times in your business that are slower than others. And sometimes it's because of things that are normal business related kind of ebbs and flows, just people buying more during the holiday season. For example, for most people, that's a very busy time of year. For me, that's very slow. That's my slow time of year is the holiday season. Like Q4 for me is slower because I sell mostly to professional cake decorators and to people who are just doing a birthday cake for their kids. But a lot of professional cake decorators buy decorations from me and they don't do as many cakes in December because it's not wedding cake season. So for me, my business generally slows down in Q4. So while everybody else is talking about how busy they are, I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs and feeling like I'm on vacation. So that's all right for me. But you have to understand that you, you might have to be in business for a few years before you can really see these patterns and understand that it is normal to be slower, you know, sometimes of the year and sometimes you should be busier and that's just how your business is going to go. So, you know, depending on, let's say that you sell only, you specialize in Father's Day gifts, right? So you would think that maybe the month leading up to Father's Day is always going to be very busy for you. But the rest of the year, maybe not. So you might sell some things, but it's not going to be specifically as busy as that one time of year. And you could know that going into it. But if you're new to this, you might expect that that slow time is not normal, even when it is. And you're going to freak out a little bit. So just understand that you're going to see patterns eventually. If you keep at it, you're going to see patterns. Sometimes you're going to be real busy. Sometimes you're not. And when I was doing wedding cakes, every single November, I would start freaking out because the the calls for tasting appointments would slow down. Nobody was calling me. Nobody was booking cakes. It's just a really slow time of year. And every single year I would start freaking out because I was thinking, oh, you know, you always think um, I'm going, my business is failing. I'm going to starve. I'm not going to have any money. I'm going to have to live in the dumpster and I'm going to die in a ditch, right? But then you remember, oh, this is normal. This happens every year and you get over it. And then January comes and after engagement season, which is the holidays, because people don't generally get married as often during the holidays, but they do get engaged. All the brides go crazy. Your phone starts ringing again in January and you're, and you're back, in, back in your normal track. So remember that and don't be so scared when people say, oh, my business is slowed down and you're thinking, oh, my business is slowed down too. Maybe we're all going to die. Now, it, it just be, look for the patterns because eventually you'll start seeing patterns. And like I said, if it's the first year you've done this, you might not, but just keep track of it and you'll see it eventually. Now, what happens though, if it should be a busy time of year for you, or you have kind of steady sales online and you have a certain number of sales every week and you kind of expect that. And then all of a sudden that stops or it slows down or you just feel like something is wrong. That could be something completely out of your control. Right now we're kind of in a worldwide recession, regardless of what people say, you know, the economy is kind of crappy and people, when they're spending money, apparently they're spending money on travel because during the pandemic, people couldn't travel. So now there's kind of a rebound effect with that. A lot of people are spending their money in other th ways and on other things, as opposed to going online and buying stuff. It could be that this is something that's completely out of your control. It could be that your product just isn't in demand right now, or it was trendy and now it's not. And I remembered, uh, let me, that's, see, I've tried to stay away. The last few podcasts I've done, I have been biting my tongue so hard. And if you listen to my tone, you'll probably recognize that I'm I'm trying to keep a very measured tone and not get irate about things. You know, let me drink this. So I just wanted to talk about something light today, and let's just get let's just get into this because I'm I could yap about this all day. What I want to do, I'm going to go over to my Facebook group because someone had posted a thread that kind of goes along with this, and the question was. What are some things you do when sales seem to be slower than normal? 
Um, the first person, Gianna, says that she runs a, bil a bajillion reports off of Edge and works my customer list. That's really important. Okay, you need to have a mailing list. And I've just I've just closed my email list class, so I get nothing from telling you this. I you know I don't sell an email list class anymore. But you need to start a mailing list just so that you can contact people because that's how you generate sales immediately from people who want to hear from you. These are people who sign up for your email list have said, "I want your product. I want to hear more about it. I want to hear about your sales. I want to hear more from you." They have consciously signed up to receive those emails. You need to have an email list. So that's the one thing that you can do. And I've done that before many times. If I'm gonna go on vacation, I usually send out an email before and I get some sales then. Then I'll send out an email when I come back. If I want to force some sales on a specific platform, I'll send out a sale just on that platform to my email list. So that's, that's just something, you know, you need an email list, so get one started. Um, Claire says she drinks, okay? And then I think somebody else said they cry. Uh, okay, you guys, I, I know that these are funny answers, but that's not, that's not, that's not good. Okay. And yeah, first drink and then go do some work. Okay. Um, Misty says she creates new products, updates photos, does social media or cleans her house. And there is an LOL at the end of that. But yeah, I mean, sometimes cleaning your house is actually therapeutic. If you haven't had time to clean your house and now all of a sudden things are slower, cleaning your house actually makes you feel good. But let's go back to the other things. Create new products, I do that. Updates photos, I, I usually don't do that. I hate dealing with photos. And I, I have to go and change all my Etsy photos in one shot because they have text on them and I'm just really not looking forward to that. Maybe I'll do a video about that also. Ugh. Social media, I do social media, well, I, I do Pinterest. I don't do Instagram and Facebook so much. So maybe I do social media, but I schedule things. So I definitely would do that. But all of those things are good things to do because it keeps you in front of people. The creating new products is good because it gives people more things to choose from, right? And maybe you can think of something that's not as saturated and not as competitive. And maybe if you're sell selling things that are trendy, you can think of something else to sell. So there's that. Updating photos is good if you have to, but yeah, like I said, that's a lot of work. I hate telling people to change their photos when I do shop reviews for the channel members here because it's a lot of work and I'm just not looking forward to doing it for myself. Okay, Jane says she sews products and stocks up for holidays and she breathes. Yeah, sometimes that's a good thing to do because you have to look at slow times kind of as a little vacation. And I kind of like it. I'm at the point now where I kind of like it when it's slow because it feels like a little vacation and I can do other things that I really want to do. And when I say that, I mean like work on my blogs. I'm not saying I'm going to go have fun. I Well, for me, it's fun, but I'm not gallivanting around having fun. I'm working on blogs, but yeah, making products and stocking up for the holidays is important. And I, I am going to do another podcast, but I'll schedule that before this one. So if you haven't heard that, go listen to that one. It came out last week. And it had some really good tips. Also a blog article that goes with it. I'll post that under here too. Okay, um, let me see. Amanda says she works on new items to list. So that's kind of the same thing as making new products. Check supplies as in making sure you have what you need ready for the upcoming, hopefully busy holiday season. See, we're, we're talking about this in August and that's a good time to start looking at your supplies. Um, but she says also check around for cheaper suppliers and see if you can cut your costs. I think that that is a really good suggestion because this is, if you have a slowdown period, go find ways to cut your costs. And a lot of times we get in the habit of just buying from one supplier and you never check the prices. But if you have a you know, couple extra hours, go and do some investigation. See if there's another supplier that maybe is a little cheaper that you haven't looked at yet. Or if one of your older suppliers is still in business and you want to go back to them, see if what their prices are. But look around to see what you can cut. And there's generally like apps that you don't use anymore. Um, I, I'm going to get rid of a few of my apps. I was thinking today, two of them that I pay for like an annual subscription. I probably don't need to reinvest in those, but I'm going to look at that. So there's a lot of things that you can do to save money. And when the times are slow, it's a good time to do that because the money that you save is gonna offset any profit that you would have been making with those sales. And you don't have to work for that, right? You just have to 
order from somebody differently or cancel a subscription or whatever. Okay, Mary says she adds new products, runs a sale. I've done that before. If things are really slow on a platform, you can, like I said at the very beginning, send out to your mailing list. Here's a discount only on this platform. It's the only place it's good. I just, two days ago, I did a flash sale and I did it for my email list because I wanted to force some sales on Go Imagine, which worked, you know, and it was like six hours. It was a flash sale, meaning like a flash sale. It was not a three day flash sale. That's not a flash sale to me. It was like, here's the email. You better go get it now because I'm turning it off. And I did get some sales. So running a sale and the next thing she says, send out an email and they, they kind of go together, right? Offer specials for new first time buyers and blast on social media for your amazing goodies. Yeah, just work on other stuff. There's, there's other things. Jessica says she throws a pity party for myself. Don't do that. I, I would, you know, I would say give yourself 10 minutes to feel pitiful and then move on. And I've told people that before. If, if something happens to you, just give yourself 10 minutes and then move on because it's not helping. It's not going to help to feel sorry for yourself. And I know you guys are joking, so don't, don't get mad at me for getting, you know, for saying that. Anyway, Janet says she sends a newsletter out, not necessarily having a sale, just reminding people that I exist. That's very good. And then this is an interesting thing. I shared the gist of the newsletter to about 40 Facebook groups that I'm a member of that allow publicity posts. Okay. I would say that that is a very good strategy if you actually get traffic from those groups and you know, you'll know which ones you get traffic from. So if you are, if you want to participate in that, I don't have time, but if you can find Facebook groups that allow you to post links and some have like a one day a week link sharing thing. Now I'm in a couple of groups that have people that would be making things to sell. And there's one day a week when they're allowed to post links to their stuff, do that. Um, but you know, just be careful cause you get kicked out of Facebook groups too, but there you go. Oh, Karen says she reevaluates all of her life choices, puts in applications and lowers her prices. No, don't do that. Do some of the other stuff that we talked about. And you know what though? I, I will say that there are days when it would be very tempting to put in some applications and just go stand behind a cash register and check people out and then come home and not have to do any work. That would be all right. And I've done that before. I have done that before when I was younger, you know, so it might not be good for my back now, but anyway. Okay. Um, Kathy says you could take this time to work on a longer project, like scheduling out emails or social media posts or work on updating your store, take an online class. That's a good idea. Or just research how to do something for your business. Okay. So that's actually a good idea that if you have time when you can actually concentrate on something, you could learn if you've been trying to figure out Google Analytics now. I actually took a class for that and you have to devote time to that. So if it's as a slow time and you're not making as many sales, that's a good thing to do. And taking a class when you actually have to pay attention, that's an option. So and I'm sure that we all have classes that are sitting there that we haven't done and we've paid for. So go back and look in your inbox for all of the classes that you've bought and you haven't looked at because I'm sure there are some. Okay, Suzanne says she makes new designs, clean the leased office, accounting, check shipping supplies for holidays, organize, update photos, work on a website. The list is endless. It's true. The list is endless. And but a lot of these we're having some um, re repetition now. So I think that there's and Audrey says clean the house. Okay, so I, I'm seeing some I'm seeing some uh, commonalities here clean your house. I think sometimes cleaning your house, like I said, it's therapeutic and it makes you feel like you've accomplished something because you have, but it also gives you a clean workspace, right? Okay. Um, Heather says, and I think this is going to be the last one because we're starting to get a little repeated or maybe not. I'll see what else is there. She says, I list constantly at least four to five days a week because she does vintage and vintage. You definitely have to list constantly. Don't think that if you're making handmade stuff, you have to list things constantly, but vintage, it does help. I've seen when I make an effort, which I don't in my vintage shop, that I actually do get more sales. And I was thinking, I need to list some more vintage stuff. Anyway, she says she has weeds out old inventory, has a sale on old inventory, cleans up listings and refreshes them, like taking new pictures of old stale listings. I don't run out of things to do. Yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm going to stop there because I think that basically that's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of skimming through, I'm reading this as we're going. Um, 
And at, no, one more thing. Okay, Tom says, nothing. Not touching old listings or trying to edit my shop in any way. Etsy is too fast upgrading their algorithms before our amended listings are indexed that already morphs to something different. Well, the, the listings are indexed right away. That's, that's kind of a, you know, that's not right. But I see your point. And that's basically what I do. If my sales slow down, I don't do anything because I know that my titles and tags are fine for SEO on Etsy. I know that my pictures are fine, except now I have to go in and change the ones with text because they've changed that. But I didn't do anything to that at first. And now I'm going to go in. I waited a little bit to see what else they're going to do. And now I'm going to go and change that. But that's not because my shop is slow. That's just because Etsy changed something, right? So you don't necessarily need to freak out and go and do everything. Because I, I think I actually did another video on this channel about don't do this when your sales are slow. And it was to go in. Don't go in and change all your titles and tags. And if you think about all the things that I mentioned here, nobody said, I go in and rewrite everything. I redo my SEO. Some people said they change photos. That could be good. But don't go in and change your whole shop just because sales have slowed down. Because like we were talking about at the beginning, it could be economic stuff. It could be seasonal. It could be just natural ebbs and flows. There's probably nothing wrong, quote unquote, wrong with your listings. Photos might be good. But as far as the titles and tags, if you have described accurately what's in your listings on Etsy or on your website, you probably don't need to redo that. So you can go in and do some research for keywords, maybe new ones that you want to try out, but don't go and redo every single thing just because your Etsy sales slowed down a little bit. It's not a good idea. Tom is 100% right. And, you know, it's, it's just, that's a panic. That's a panic reaction. So we don't want to do that. But go clean your house. You know, I mean, that might be a good thing to do. All right, leave me any questions. If you have things that you do when your sales are slow, post them in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you later.